All right, so let's start. Today's daf is Kuf Vav in Masechet Pesachim. We are going to start approximately uh, on the second line of daf Kuf Vav Amud Aleph with the uh, with the last two words. Rav Ashi Amar Te'amo Pegamo V'Koshel Barachat Tzarich Shior Chadam Miltahi. So we said that two of the ideas uh, we had learned eight different halachot from the case of the person who comes Motzei Shabbat into their house and makes Havdalah. So uh, two of the halachot were that when you taste the cup, you ruin the cup, pigamo. And the other one was that there's a, a required measurement for the amount of wine that needs to be in the cup. So Rav Ashi says that these two halachot are really one thing. And this is what it means. What is the reason why, if you taste it, you ruin it? In other words, according to Rav Ashi, it's not that tasting it ruins it qualitatively because it's a, you know, it's a backwash or whatever that you ruin the taste because you you put your mouth on it. That's not the reason. It's because you spoil the someone. You know, like people don't like to share drinks or whatever. Not because of that. It's because it had the exact correct amount in it and you diminish the amount by tasting it. That's why pigamo. But according to Ravashi, there's no halacha that if somebody tastes the wine, it ruins the wine. If there was a lot of wine in the cup, let's say it was a very large cup, and it was more than you needed for kiddush, and somebody tasted a little bit of it, you could use it. You could still use it for another bracha. It's just that when you had exactly the right amount and you tasted a little bit of it, now that it doesn't have the right amount anymore. Revit, yeah. So the um, so so that's what Ravashi is saying. So contrary to the way some of the uh, Chachamim understood the concept of uh, kospagum, because many of them understood kospagum means that if somebody tastes it, you could have a, a an enormous cup with uh, 25 riviot in it. But if somebody tastes it, they already spoiled it. Nobody wants to drink from that cup anymore. But Ravashi says no. It's all about the quantitative measurement. Rabbi Yaakov bar Idi kapid achatzava pegima. That it says that. Um, Rabbi Yaakov Bar Idi was careful even about Chatzava Pegima, which if you take a look at the, uh, where does he say it? I thought that there was a, a, something here from the, oh, it's the next one. Okay. So that even a pitcher, he doesn't say anything about this one, even a pitcher that was Pagum. In other words, even if you had a, uh, a pitcher that had uh, been used for something else, it would seem. It seems like this is what it means. That even if it had been used for something else, he wanted to have a fresh pitcher of wine. When he would bring the pitcher to the table for Kiddush, it had to be fresh, hadn't been used for anything else. That's what it seems to mean. Okay? And more over, it tells us, that Rav Idi Bar Shisha Kapida Kasab Begima, that Rav Idi Bar Shisha was careful about a cup that was Pagum. Now, in this case, it seems to be referring back to the original idea of Pagum that we had before. Not that we, uh, uh, not the issue of quantity, but even of quality. That if somebody used it, you wouldn't be able to use it for something else. Meaning, if somebody tasted from it, you wouldn't be able to use it for something else. That's what it seems to mean. And pre- previous to that, when it said a pitcher that's Pagum, it would also say seem to mean, although it's not exactly clear, it would seem to mean that if somebody tasted from it, in other words, if they used it for something else, meaning that they tasted from it, that would ruin the entire pitcher, even if it was very large, it doesn't matter. And, uh, even if there was a barrel of wine that somebody tasted from, you know, took a little bit from and tasted it, um, it would be pagom. It doesn't necessarily mean, it doesn't seem to necessarily mean that they, uh, that they actually t- put their mouth on it um, but that they used it, they took from it um, certainly if they put their mouth on it that would seem to be clear that that would be pagum but it appears like it means that he would bring a fresh barrel of wine to show, in other words, more honor to the mitzvah of Kiddush, a fresh pitcher of wine that nothing had, hadn't been poured for anything else or tasted from even not tasted with your mouth but you know, used for anything else, a fresh barrel of wine that was brand new for Kiddush the rabbis taught Shabbat the It says that remember the Shabbat day to make it holy. Remember it over wine, which means that the mitzvah of the Torah that we that we read about in the Aseret Hadibrot and the Ten Commandments is telling us to make kiddush on wine. In the Ela Bayom, that implies only Bayom because it says that Yom Shabbat. How do we know that even at night you have to make kiddush? So the uh, Talmud Lomar, the Torah comes to tell us Zachor et, et Yom Shabbat um, and uh, the, the extra words in the Pasuk, uh, come to teach us. In other words, the emphasis on et yom Shabbat the Kaddisho, the day of Shabbat to sanctify it, mean not only the day 
daytime, but also the nighttime. Okay? Now the Gemara asks the obvious question here, but what do you mean? Balayla minayin, why are you asking me how I know that I should make Kiddush at night? Adraba, the opposite. Ikar Kiddusha Balaylahu. Balaylahu Kaddish. The Ki Kaddish, the Chilat Yoma Bayla Kiddushay. What do you mean? If I knew that there was a mitzvah of Kiddush, I would assume it was when? At night time, not daytime. Because when do you sanctify the day? When it starts. Not in the middle of it. Why would I sanctify in the middle of it? So, and not only that, what's also problematic about this Brita is that it says, how do we know that at night you need to make Kiddush? And then it says, It quotes the same Pasuk of Yom HaShabbat, the day of Shabbat. So, in other words, how are we... First of all, the Brita doesn't make any sense because it's presuming that the daytime Kiddush would be more important, <laughs> more fundamental than the nighttime Kiddush. Second of all, it quotes the Pasuk of Yom HaShabbat anyway. How does the Yom HaShabbat show you nighttime? So, therefore, we, we amend the Brita. So that, that's the end of the that's the end of the question. In other words, the t- the Tana is trying to find a source for kiddush at night, and he brings a pasuk about the day. It doesn't make any sense. Rather, this is the this is the way the brighter should read. That when it says remember the Shabbat to make it holy, it means when it begins. Really, it should have said, I only know at night. How do I know that even? Even during the day, there's a concept of Kiddush. Talmud Lama, the Torah tells us, Zachor at Yom HaShabbat. So, so it, the fact that it says that Yom HaShabbat means the daytime of Shabbat, both the night and the day. But obviously, nighttime, Zochreu, from the word Zachor, we know that from the very beginning, it should be a Kiddush to sanctify the day. And then that we have to have it also during the daytime, that the extra Pasuk of at Yom HaShabbat comes to teach us. Now, the Tosafot here says mentions that Zechira is associated with wine because of the Pasuk, Zechrok Yen Levanon, like we read in the Haftarav Shuvah. Okay, so they, uh, his, his mention, Zechrok Yen Levanon, is like wine. And then he talks about Vayichulu here, how the Vayichulu uh, came to be, and so on. But uh, really we say that Kiddush on wine is essentially Dirabanan. This is a, what we call a remez in the Pasuk. There's a hint to the concept of wine being involved in Kiddush. Really when we say Tefillah and mention the Shabbat, that fulfills the biblical obligation of Kiddush. The idea of doing it over a cup of wine is rabbinic according to almost all the uh, Rishonim. So Bayom Ma'imivarech, we know what the nighttime Kiddush looks like. What does daytime Kiddush look like? So the answer is, Amar of Yehuda, Borei Priya Geffen. All you have to say during the day is Borei Priya Geffen. Now we know that we say lots of psukim, really? right? But the psukim are just a custom. They're not really a blessing. We're just saying psukim. It's like Havdalah. What's the essence of Havdalah? Saying Borei Priya Geffen, Borei Minei Bissamim, or Atzei Bissamim. Say Borei Meoreya Eshen, Say Hamavdil Ben Kodesh Lachol. The psukim of, uh, whether it be the Ashkenazic custom or the Sephardic custom, it doesn't, these are all just psukim that were added later. But the real core of Havdalah, if you missed all the Pesukim and you only heard Bray Priya Geffen, if you're running into the room and you missed all the Pesukim, Mizmor Le David, uh, Vishamru, everything, and you came just for Bray Priya Geffen, that's fine. You, you, still, you, you still fulfill the mitzvah because there, it's not even mentioned in the Talmud. All of these Pesukim were added at a later time. Ravashi Ikla Le Machoza. Once Ravashi came to Machoza, Amru Le Kedish Lanmar, they said to him, please make Kiddush for us. Kiddush Rabbah, make the big Kiddush. Okay, because what is a big Kiddush? Kiddush HaRabah is the daytime. Okay, right? If you look in the Siddur, right, that's why it's so confusing. Right, because it says in the Siddur, Kiddush HaRabah. Right, Kiddush HaRabah is the daytime Kiddush. So why is it called Kiddush HaRabah? Rashbam says the reason is because since Borei Priya Geffen is something which is used all the time. It's used in everything. It's used at weddings. It's used at nighttime Kiddush, daytime Kiddush, Havdalah, Kiddush of holidays, all the... So they call Borei Priya Geffen Kiddush Rabbah, the big Kiddush, because it's the one that's the biggest because it's the most ubiquitous, we would say. It's used the most. Okay? However, some say that it's what we say, Lashon Saginahor. Just like we call a blind person someone who has a lot of light, it's a euphemism. In other words, really, the... Per- Right, to bless God means to curse. Right, so so too, Kiddush Rabbah is sort of is a euphemism. Really, it's the tiny Kiddush, because all you say is Borei Priya Geffen, but they called it the big Kiddush. So Ravashi comes to Mechozan, he's confused, because they said to him, make for us the Kiddush Rabbah, the big Kiddush. He's thinking maybe their custom is that they say the whole Kiddush during the daytime. 
right? What we say Friday night, maybe they also say it during Shabbat day. So he wasn't sure. So what did he do? So he had a strategy. He said, uh, so he said to the, so Havule, they gave him the cup. Savar, my new Kiddusha Rabbah. He said to himself, what's a Kiddusha Rabbah? What am I supposed to say? Amar michdi kol abrachot kulan borei priya gefen amri bereisha. So he said, I know that it must start with borei priya gefen. That's I, that I know. Every kid who starts with that. So what am I going to do? So he said, Amar borei priya gefen. So he takes the cup, says borei priya gefen, and then he watched vagidbe, and he extended it. He was going very slow. He was doing chazanut, you know. He's going slow, looking, and he saw. He saw one guy bending to drink. As soon as he finished Bori Priya Geffen, so he realized that was all that it was. So he was waiting to see everyone's reaction. If they're waiting for me, that means that I'm supposed to say the whole Kiddush. If they go to drink, that means that that's, that's all there is. Did, so, yeah, what did you say? How did Bori Priya Geffen do Kiddush? I mean, how does that sanctify the day? Okay, that's a whole that's a whole big discussion that they make. So the Rashbam actually he mentions something here. He says that it's basically a kavod of the day. He says that um, he asks your question implicitly because he says on Rabbi Yehuda he says atay kasa de chamra uvaruche umishte mikshum kavod shabbat. The fact that you bring a, a wine, a cup of wine, to make a toast, so to speak, before you eat, because normally if you have hamotzi, you have first to make hamotzi and then you drink during the meal. The fact that you're bringing wine before the meal and saying it says that's the kavod that's the honor of the day that you're showing it's distinct he says shu inyan shir she'enomrim shir ala layayin because whenever you bring wine it's a concept of song and praise and thanks to God so you're you're showing a special kavod that's the way that he says it but actually Rabbi Soloveitchik has a whole long shiur on how um, uh, on a whole long uh, a piece of Torah that's many 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 pages one of his famous lengthy shiurim that he gave uh, explaining you know why the kiddush of the day is is really a kiddush but but, but this is the Rashbam's simple explanation. It's like making a toast before the meal. So, um, so Kare Anafshe, the uh, Ravashi said about himself, Hechacham Enav Birosho, the wise person, his eyes are in his head, meaning the wise person is always thinking ahead. So he, he realized, you know, the best way is to strategize. How am I going to figure out? I don't want to look like a fool and ask them, what is Kiddusha Rabba? I'm going to wait and see. And he waited and he saw, and he was able to make the correct Kiddush as a result. Right, so Amrei Bnei Rabbi Chia, the sons of Rabbi Chia said, "Mishlo ifdil b'motzei Shabbat." Somebody who fails to say kiddush, I mean, sorry, to say havdalah on motzei Shabbat, mavdil veolech bechol Shabbat kulo. He can say havdalah all week long. Vead kama? How far? Amr Rabbi Zera ad Rabbi Ibi Shabbat. It's velo ad bechlal, which means to say he can say it only until Wednesday, but not including Wednesday, up until Wednesday. Meaning he can say it up until Tuesday, and as the Rishonim say, the commentary say, it doesn't include Wednesday, but it's up to Wednesday. Kihad diativ Rabbi Zera kame de Rav Asi. That like the case where Rabbi Zera was sitting in front of Rav Asi. Amrei la Rav Asi kame de Rabbi Yohanan. Some say it was Rav Asi in front of Rabbi Yohanan. Viativ kamar, and he was sitting and saying the inyan gitin. This is alachan gitin. Chadab b'Shabbata, Tirei u'Tlata, Batar Shabbata, Arba v'Hamsha u'Malei Yoma, Kamei Shabbata. So, what's the significance of this? Now, the Rashbam's explanation. There are many different explanations in the Rishonim and Hilchot Gitin about this. The uh, exactly what the implications of this are. But the idea of for Gitin, for instance, if a person were to say, um, "I'm giving you this." Get a man says to his wife, he can he can give a get on al tanai. He can give a get on a condition. Say to his wife, here's your get. You want to get a divorce? Fine. Here's your get, but you must bring me a thousand dollars before Shabbat, before this coming Shabbat. What is considered before Shabbat? Revi'i chamishi shishi. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. If he says al menat on the condition that you bring me money after Shabbat, what's considered after Shabbat? Only up to, through Tuesday. Yeah. Once it's Wednesday, that's already before the next Shabbat. Right. So if you don't bring me the money Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, that's already before the next Shabbat. It's not after Shabbat anymore. So that you didn't fulfill the condition, so it's no good. Another, uh, another case of this or another application is where, let's say, for example, the husband says to the sofer, I empower you to write the get before Shabbat, or I empower you to write the get after Shabbat. So there's a time limit. The sofer can only write the get according to the command of the, of the husband. So therefore, if the husband gives any kind of parameters, like it has to be after Shabbat, it has to be, so then he only has the window of, Mo, of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday to write it for it to be uh, legitimate for him to give it to the wife. So, 
In any case, what do you see from there? That this concept of what's defined as anything from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is defined as after Shabbat. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is defined as before Shabbat. And so the, the application of this to our case, of course, is that for Havdalah, it's still considered after Shabbat through Tuesday. So you could still say Havdalah. Amr Rabbi Yaakov Bar Idi, Avalua La Or. But that's not true about fire or about the Or, about the light. In other words, you can't say the blessing of Borei Meorei Ha'esh after Motzei Shabbat. What's the reason? Rashbam says, because the reason why we bring fire on Saturday night is because that's when light was created. On Saturday night, meaning on the first day. Because when you, when you do have Dala, you're not just ending Shabbat, but you're bringing in Sunday. Why do we bring the fire? Because fire was created, or light was created on the first day. So therefore, you, you bring the light only on Saturday night. Once it's, once it's Sunday or tu- Monday or Tuesday, you can no longer bring the... Um, uh, the Borei Meorei Ha'ish for Havdalah. And in fact, really, um, those who say Havdalah after Saturday night, they, they don't say anything except, they don't say Bisamim either. They only say Hagefen and uh, Hamavdil. So the, Is that the, a real obligation? That, well, these other two are extra. So for example, if you only had a cup of wine, you could do Havdalah and just a cup of wine and Hamavdil. And then later on, if you find Bisamim that night, you could smell it. If you see fire, you could do, you could do the Borei Meorei Ha'esh on Saturday night. The, the, a common a, a common application of this is it's not so common that people forget to make Havdalah completely. But what is common is a person could be sick or more commonly, um, somebody's in Onen. Somebody passes away, let's say on Friday. There's no time to bury the person before Sunday. So Saturday night, the person's not allowed to make Havdalah. On Shabbat, an Onen who hasn't buried their relative He's allowed to do all the mitzvot of Shabbat. But once Shabbat is over, he's onen. He can't say any brachot anymore. So he can't say havdalah. So when do you say havdalah? After the funeral, you say havdalah. When you come back to the house after the funeral. Same as like what we do on Tisha B'Av. We have to wait till Sunday night. So he has to wait till after the funeral to make havdalah. So he only makes havdalah, hagefen, and hamavdil. That's it. For the, for the person who's known it. So, Amar Rav Brona, Amar Rav, Rav Brona said in the name of Rav, Hanotel Yadav, as we turn to Amud Bet, Lo Yekadesh, somebody who washes his hands should not say Kiddush. Now, what does this mean? According to the Rash Bam and according to Rashi, what we're talking about here is a situation where the person washed his hands by accident. He forgot that they were going to be making Kiddush. He went and washed his hands for the bread. Yeah, so, the, so according to Rosh Bam and Rashi, the problem is that he's making an interruption now. If he goes now, he washed his hands already, and now he goes and he makes Kiddush, that's not good. So Rosh Bam says, what he should do is listen to the Kiddush from somebody else and just say Amen. But he shouldn't say the Kiddush himself, because saying the Kiddush is an interruption in between Nitzilat Yadayim and the Kiddush. And if he did say Kiddush, now he would have to go back and wash his hands again for the sake of bread. So he should have someone else make the Kiddush for him. Now the Tosafot, Rabbi Nutan, has a totally different interpretation of this whole piece. He says that that's not what happened here. That in fact, um, in fact, we're we're talking about uh, uh, d- different situations. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So the. Um Rav Yitzchak Bar Shmuel Bar Marta Rav Yitzchak Bar Shmuel Bar Marta said Akatilo Nach Nafshei De Rav Rav has not even died yet Shachich and Shachach Ninhu Lishmat Tetei and you've already forgotten his teachings. What does he mean? Zimnin Sagiin Avaka Imna Kamei De Rav Many times I was with Rav Zimnin De Chaviva Ale Rifta Mekadesh Rifta Zimnin De Chaviva Ale Hamra Mekadesh Hamra There were times where he didn't want to do Kiddush on wine. He didn't feel like having wine. He was hungry. So he said Kiddush on bread because you're allowed to say Kiddush on bread. You say instead if you, you wash your hands and you substitute Hamotzi Lecha Min Haaretz for the for Borei Priya Gefen and then you say Kiddush. In other words imagining that instead of saying Borei Priya Gefen you, you wash your hands say Hamotzi Lecha Min Haaretz Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Velech HaOlam Asher Kiddushan Abba Mitzvotah Verat Zavano V'Shabbat Kotro V'Avav Ratzon Hinechidano Etc. Etc. Baruch Atah Hashem Mekadesh HaShabbat and you eat the bread. That's You're allowed to do that. So sometimes he would eat the bread. Sometimes he would drink the wine and have Kiddush. So what do you see though? You see that you can wash your hands and you can say the whole language of the Kiddush because you said Hamotzi and then you said the whole language of the Kiddush and uh, it's not an interruption. No, because you said Hamotzi if you wash it. Yeah, but you wash said Hamotzi. Ah, so that's what the Tosafot asks. Tosafot says, but what do you mean? That's not comparable. 
That's not comparable. Because the question is, can you say Kiddush on wine before you do Hamotzi? Not can you do Hamotzi and then say Kiddush. Say Hamotzi and then Kiddush for sure. So Tosafot says that the Kiddush is in a case where the, where the, the, the point here is that even if the person went to wash Nitzilat Yadayim and then was reconsidered and said, you know what? I want to say Kiddush on wine instead. Right? That's, where the, that's where the discussion is. So the, the point is that, that in that case, even though he already washed his hands and he was going to do bread, he, he said, no, 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 I'll do it on wine. And it's still okay and it's not considered an interruption according to the way Tosafot understands here. Okay? So now, the, there's, now there's a totally different position of Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam has a radical view that nobody else agrees with, that this whole idea of Kiddush and bread is completely not true. It can't be done. And he interprets this piece here that talks about making Kiddush on Achamra uh, and Kiddush Arifta, making Kiddush on bread or making Kiddush on wine in a totally different way because he rejects the whole concept of making Kiddush on bread. So it's a, this whole interesting long Tosafot here. How does he explain this whole discussion um, and, and how does he account for the... Um, you know, how does he uh, uh, sort of uh, follow the, the back and forth here? What, what's, the, uh, what's the whole argument back and forth here if you can't really make Kiddush on bread? So we're going to leave that aside, but um, it's a very interesting subject. So now, Ba'amine Rav Chana Bar Chinena Me Rav Huna. Rav Chana Bar Chinena asked Rav Huna, Ma Ta'am Mahu Shiavdil. A person who tasted some food already, can he make up the law? Remember, we learned yesterday the question. If a person has a little bit of food, are they still allowed to make Havdalah? Amar Lehi said to him, Ani Omer Ta'am Mavdil. I say, if you, make, if you eat something by accident, after you've said Arvit on Saturday night, you can still do Havdalah. But Rav Asi Amar Ta'am Inom Mavdil. Rav Asi says, once you already started eating food, you don't have to do Havdalah, because the whole concept of Havdalah is to differentiate between the eating you were doing Lichvod Shabbat, and the eating that you're doing on Chol. You already started doing your eating on Chol, there's no purpose now in saying the Havdalah anymore, according to Rav Asi. So, However, once upon a time, Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yirmiya bar Abba, ikla lebe Ravasi. Rabbi Yirmiya bar Abba was at Ravasi's house. Ishtale, he forgot, vita'im midi, and he ate something before making havdalah. So he made a mistake. So what happened? Ha, uh, so havule kasava avdil. They brought him a cup of wine and he made havdalah. But what's the problem? He's in Ravasi's house, and Ravasi is the one who says, no. You're not supposed to make havdalah if you already ate something. That's only if you didn't eat, according to this pe- person. We'll say this because you didn't eat. Right. It would have to be, right. It does. We're going to see on the next, uh, on the next daf, it talks about a guy who slept overnight because he, you know, he, he didn't have any wine. He was going to get it in the morning, so he didn't eat anything that night. He waited. So Amrale Devitu, his wife said to him, in other words, Ravasi's wife said to Rav the master does not do this. In other words, Ravasi, if he eats something, he holds that if you eat something on Saturday night before you made Abdullah, you're not supposed to make Abdullah. Why are you making Abdullah? So Amarla Ravasi said to his wife, Shivake, leave him alone. He holds like his teacher, meaning he holds like Rav and Rav Huna in the name of Rav that said that you do say Abdullah even if you ate something. That's what, but I, I disagree. Ravasi says, I disagree. But he's doing his own. Minhag, doing his own custom. Amar Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef says, Amar Shmuel, the name of Shmuel, Ta'am eno mikadesh. If you ate something on Friday night, you don't say Kiddush. In other words, what's the whole purpose of saying Kiddush? To start your eating of Shabbat with a declaration of the holiness of Shabbat. But you already started eating on Shabbat, so what's the point? However, Ta'am, and similarly, Ta'am eno mavdil. And if you eat on Saturday night, you don't make Avdalah. Rabba said, Rav Nachman Amar Shmuel. Okay, so in the name of Rav Nachman and the name of Shmuel. So there's a, a machlok about what Shmuel says. Rav Yosef says that Shmuel says that if you eat on Friday night, you don't say Kiddush. If you eat on Saturday night before making Havdalah, you don't say Havdalah. However, Rabba said in the name of Rav Nachman that, that Shmuel said, Ta'am Mikadesh with Ta'am Mavdil, the opposite. That it's irrelevant whether you ate on Friday night by accident or you ate on Saturday night by accident. You still say Kiddush and Havdalah. And we turn to Kuvzayin Amur Aleph. Amar Rav Rav says, Hilchita Ta'am Mikadesh with Ta'am Mavdil. That the Allah is, even if you ate something by accident on Friday night, you still say Kiddush. Even if you ate something by accident Saturday night, you still say Havdalah. Umi Shalom Kiddush Be'erev Shabbat. And if you didn't make Kiddush on Erev Shabbat, Mikadesh Rolech Kol Ayom Kulo Ad Motzei Shabbat. And if you, di- you uh, said Kiddush, you forgot to say Kiddush on, sa- on Friday night, you can make Kiddush 
Kiddush all day long until Shabbat is over. And if a person uh, forgets to make Havdalah, they have all week to make Havdalah. Amemar had a different version of Rava's conclusion. So it's basically it's basically the same idea. He just worded it a little bit differently. But the but um, the, the same idea that whether you ate on Saturday, Friday night or you ate on Saturday night doesn't matter. Now, interestingly, the way that the Rashbam explains and the Rash, Rashi seems to explain this concept that that if you ate on Friday night, you don't say kiddush. It doesn't mean you don't say kiddush the whole Shabbat. What it means is you ate on Friday night, so forget the Friday night. Saturday morning, when you go to say Kiddush, say the whole Kiddush of Friday night. In other words, your Kiddush has to precede the meal of the day. So Friday night, you messed up. Right? So therefore, forget it. Just finish your meal Friday night. Saturday morning, now you can say Kiddush before the meal of Saturday morning, before you eat anything. And you'll transfer the halakha, so to speak, to the morning time. But it's not saying you should completely get rid of the idea of Kiddush for that Shabbat. However, we hold, we don't hold like that, we hold the Ta'am Mikadesh, which means even if you accidentally ate something Friday night, you still say Kiddush, just as if nothing happened. And the same Saturday night, if you forgot, then you say Havdalah.